YouTube, long time no see. I've been in abstentia due to the burdens of my MRCP, but now that that rubbish is out of the way, I'm back and ready to deal with some of the trickier topics that membership has thrown up. We're going to start today with internuclear ophthalmoplegia, a ten-syllable word that basically refers to when your eyes stop talking to each other. For some reason, when I was a medical student, I was never able to get my head around this one, even though when you come down to brass tacks, it's actually reasonably straightforward. As the most common cause of INO is multiple sclerosis, our patient today will be famous fictional MS sufferer, President Josiah Bartlett from the West Wing. Speaking of which, if you haven't already watched the West Wing, then God, Jed, I don't even wanna know you. Seriously, go off and watch the whole thing, all seven seasons, all 100 and whatever episodes, right now, and, and I'll just wait. The most important thing in understanding INO is to understand how absurd the concept of conjugate gaze really is. Your brain does this incredibly complex thing without even thinking. Let's ignore the up and down and focus on the side to side. Let's say that Bartlett sees Rob Lowe out the corner of his left eye and wants to look at him because, you know, come on, who wouldn't? Now looking at Rob Lowe might seem simple, but if we peel away Martin Sheen's grandfatherly facade, we'll see that things are actually far more complicated. When Bartlett looks left, his left eye moves to the left. It abducts by moving away from the midline. This requires contraction of the left lateral rectus muscle, which is innervated by the left abducens nerve. Now, you have two eyes for a reason, for depth perception, so you can figure out how far away from you Rob Lowe really is. Bartlett needs his right eye to focus on Rob Lowe as well. So the right eye moves to the left, toward the midline, adducting as his right medial rectus muscle contracts. The right medial rectus, remember, is innervated by the right oculomotor nerve. In order to avoid double vision, both these eye movements need to take place simultaneously. The left abducens nerve, which has its nucleus in the left side of the pons, must work in sync with the right oculomotor nerve, which has its nucleus in the right side of the midbrain. So you've got two different muscles on opposite sides of the face, innervated by two different nerves on opposite sides of the head and based in two opposite sides of the brain, working together in perfect harmony just so that Bartlett can look at Rob Lowe. Now with that much going on inside your brain, just when you look to the left or the right, how can there be any processing power left over to do anything else? Lots of things are done with uranium, including some bad things. So to understand I and O, you need to understand what goes wrong. You need to understand how these two nuclei talk to each other. There's a heavily myelinated tract called the medial longitudinal fasciculus that joins them up. On left lateral gaze, the right medial longitudinal fasciculus will allow the left abducens nerve and right oculomotor nerve to collaborate and move the eyes in a synchronized fashion. So what happens when this goes wrong? Remember, as I said before, this tract is heavily myelinated, which, yes, allows the nerve impulses to surf along as fast as they'd like, but leaves it susceptible to demyelinating conditions such as multiple sclerosis. So, let's imagine that Bartlett's MS is affecting his right medial longitudinal fasciculus. What happens when he tries to look to the left? As you can see, the left eye abducts successfully, but the right eye is not able to adduct past the midline. Now let's look and see what happens if Rob Lowe paces back and forth across the room. You'll see that conjugate gaze is unaffected when gazing to the right. It's only when gazing to the left that conjugate gaze is affected when the right medial longitudinal fasciculus is damaged. Bartlett may also notice some double vision when looking to the left, and you might notice on examination some nystagmus in the abducting eye. It's important to remember that the muscles and nerves themselves are unaffected. If we cover the left eye and take that one out of the equation, the right eye should be able to abduct and adduct all by itself. It just doesn't play well with others. You can also get bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia if both medial longitudinal fasciculi are affected. This is what that would look like. In unilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia, remember that the lesion is ipsilateral to the eye that does not adduct. In younger patients, multiple sclerosis is by far the most common cause. 
but in older patients, ischemia can also play a role. If you stumbled across this in your PACES exam, the most useful next test would probably be an MRI head to look for demyelinating plaques in MS or for ischemic lesions. Visual evoked potentials and a lumbar puncture for oligoclonal bands are other useful tests for multiple sclerosis. I hope that makes a little bit more sense, and more importantly, that I've inspired those of you who are still West Wing naive to get out there and enjoy the greatest show in the history of television. In particular, second series finale, Two Cathedrals, the greatest episode of television ever, except perhaps that episode of Saved by the Bell where Jesse gets hooked on caffeine pills. I'm so excited! I'm so excited! That one's good too. I'll be back soon with some more tricksy concepts, but in the meantime, why not check out JJ's Radiology Masterclass? Satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. Zach, these uh, videos are free? Shut up and take my money!